Let's get this part out of the way. Saudi Arabia is a bad actor, very bad. Between their involvement in the 9-11 attacks, the killing of Jamal Khashoggi, and a litany of other human rights abuses, the Saudi regime is obviously deplorable. But what I don't quite understand is where is the line for partnering with human rights violators? Saudi Arabia is far from the only bad actor on the world stage. And yet, American sports leagues have had no qualms about cozying up to others. One major study doesn't even rank the Saudis in the top 15 of the world's worst on human rights. According to the NGO Fund for Peace, Saudi Arabia is the 18th worst human rights abuser. Egypt ranked at number one, and China comes in at number four. The very same China, which hosted an Olympics earlier this year in which the United States participated and has cozy relationship with American sports leagues, including most notably the NBA. And guess which other American sports league China has close ties with? The PGA Tour. Yes, the very same, same PGA Tour, which has railed about how immoral its defectors are for taking the Saudi money, is doing business with China. Back in 2018, they signed a 20-year contract with a Beijing-based firm with deep ties to the Chinese government to host a series of events in the country. And of course, beyond the game of golf, scores of American corporations do business with Saudi Arabia. President Joe Biden visited Saudi Arabia last week. He fist-bumped Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. So when it comes to golf, why are so many this outraged? Why are we singling out a bunch of golfers to be outraged at? I'm confused, so let's bring in someone who is actually a golf expert. Joining us now is Gary Williams. He's a longtime host for the Golf Channel, now a golf analyst for Signature Golf. Gary, th thanks so much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. I, I am not a huge golf fan. I'll admit it. I follow it a bit. Am I getting something wrong here about what's happening? No, Dan, you, you laid it out, uh, you know, very nicely and very accurately. And, and that's where I think it's a challenge for a lot of people because there's duplicity that is going on here uh, that has a lot of people wondering why it's okay for the PGA Tour, as you just mentioned, uh, to be doing business and have been doing business with China, not only with respect to holding events there, but actually having PGA Tour China. Uh, it was an extension of the PGA Tour as a feeder system onto the PGA Tour. A lot of this has to do with the dismantling, potentially, of something that people really value, and that is the PGA Tour. You, you might have used the word, you know, that they are being dismantled, potentially, by, by the Saudi-based league. And I, I think some people think, well, look, it's, there's a difference between doing business in a country and doing business for a country. And there's something semantical about it to varying degrees. Uh, but, but the reality is that I've looked very closely at Vision 2030, which is what the Saudi government is doing in a, in a post-dependent oil economy. Uh, and they're trying to westernize themselves, and they're, and they're using the optics uh, of a lot of things that, that would appeal to, to the Western world, and that includes sports enterprises, and the PGA Tour is one of them. So this is garden variety sports washing. There's no way around it. But it doesn't eliminate the fact that the PGA Tour has had business partners yeah. with, with other countries that have human rights records that are equal to, and as you just pointed out, yeah. uh, even worse it, in Saudi Arabia. It, it, it almost seems like in the golf world today, if you're part of that inner community, you have to be furious at the Saudis, and you have to speak out almost against this. Is that fair? Yeah, well, I get, yeah, it is, it is fair in the sense that that's what's happening. What I don't, what I, well, I will not be a party to is the idea that these guys owe, owe their entire lives to the PGA. What I do take take with is these PGA Tour players using these talking points that have been given to them, literally, right. by the live people saying that they're, they're going to grow the game. That's their initiative. That's their motivation. No, they're not. They're going to make a lot of money right. up front. Right. And, and that's right. fine. Right. Just to say that. Yep. They are, and they're also, look, they're turning their back on something that helped them build their brand. None of these tour players were bitching and moaning saying that they were underpaid for years. Right. They've not. The market is bared what the market has bared. And now they're getting more money up front in a sport that has always been built in on what is a meritocracy. You get what you get based on your performance, which makes it different. Yep. So that is the one thing that I'm yeah. okay, guys, stop. Just say you're taking the money. I I appreciate that. Hey, Gary, are you in a locker room? 
I am at the golf club of Houston. All right. I have the names of, of, of actually, ironically, a couple of guys who've gone to live tour. Oh. Right, Paul Casey, I see <laughs> his right. name right there. <laughs> All right. No, I just saw lockers behind you. I'm thinking, you know, I hope the camera doesn't accidentally go over and catch one of the toilets. So, uh, uh, we're not. <laughs> I, I will actually tell you, I'm at an event that is being. It's a junior event that Steph Curry is funding. This is actually growing the game. All right. The Live Golf Tour is not growing the game. It's making a lot of guys rich. All right. Gary Williams, thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.